I told my son, I says, when the films come out, you're going to see something that you probably won't believe and you won't want to know. And I said, I'm sorry for that, but I'm going to tell my story. I want people to know that, that there is hope and there's people out there that will help you. When I came here, came to Brisbane 10 years ago, I was shocked at the price of rent. My goodness, how am I going to find anything I can afford? Spent the first year doing a house sit where I contributed something to my niece's rent while she was away, and then I got taken in by my son and his then partner. Cared for mum probably at least 20 years. Mum passed away and I hadn't considered me or my future and I ended up at risk of homelessness. I was evicted from a flat I'd lived in for 10 years because my rent kept going up but my income stayed pretty much the same. I was not able to get off the doll from all the illustration work and I wasn't able to find anywhere to live in time so I stayed with my mum. I started to go and draw houses. So then it's turned into a project of like, okay, how many places have I lived in? It's probably up to about 70 now. I was about 17 years old. I was in Canada and my father was hitting me so much I couldn't take it anymore. And I knew if I didn't get out of there, he'd kill me. That's all I could think of. You can cry a lot. You're hungry all the time. Nobody's there to help you. Sometimes you go into behind restaurants and see what they've thrown out and to, to survive. I live in people's front yards and stuff like that. And th that's how I got by. And, and, and then I, you know, I, I, I married a man uh, within a week. I met him on a Tuesday, married him the following Tuesday because I, I could get out of the house then, and he needed to stay in the country, so it was beneficial for both of us. For the first few years, we were okay. There was no problem. It just later on started going crazy, started choking me, smacking me. And you know what? I've done that before, and I don't want to go through that again. So in a way, yes, it does repeat itself, but I broke the cycle because I won't let that happen. And I made sure that my kids never, ever saw any of that because I don't want my children to see their father hitting their mother. And I just left then, I couldn't take it anymore. So I had to go in the streets, nobody else would take me on. I've been buying a house five times in the different locations where I've lived. And the price of houses kept escalating and the income in the middle of my life that has started to have broken employment, some of it's illness, but some of it is the difficulty to get back into work and the amount that you're getting paid on the benefits are even less than, than what you've been used to living on. I was part owner of, of a big house on the um, end near the pond at first. Sentimental. <laughs> Mum was my person. She was all I cared about. Never saw myself as this homeless person, and I was. I was not only still completely 100% in grief, completely dying inside, I was um, going on to Job Seeker where it would not have paid my rent, you know, it, it just didn't. So then I advertised everywhere and I did get a housemate for a while that didn't work out. The food was really obvious and sad, you know, that it resorted to having really poor diet, having to survive. So it was constant instability, so to speak, for a long couple of years. I started writing letters to all the ministers. I'm not saying that it got me anywhere exactly. I was feeling like I was active, actioning, 
my issue and pointing out that this is real and this is terrifying. When I thought that I was, okay, now I'm at the crisis point, I don't have anywhere to live. I did try to go to a housing crisis service and put myself on the Victorian Housing Registry, but they were very, yeah, it's not. Haven't you got like a friend that you could team up with? Uh, haven't you got like a drug problem? Haven't you got some children? So I thought I'm not that much in crisis. I still have resources. I still have friends and family. So that's not for me. I was staying with my mum again on the fold out couch in her retirement unit and she said, I've seen this organisation. Why don't you go to a talk about older lesbians and housing? And I was like, okay, Mum. There was somebody there from Women's Property Initiatives and they rang me up later and said, we've got a place in Bandura. Do you want to look at it? And I was like, how could I say no? How could I say no? 30% of my income and maybe a 10 year lease. And they said, well, that sounds good. I'm like, okay, okay. I had no keys, but I bought this. I don't know why I bought it, but something says buy it. And when Hag came, they gave me a key and then I put my key with my name and I had a key here, so it was really good. Like, I had no furniture, I had no fridge, no blanket, no nothing, but I had a place that was secure and nobody could throw me out and I locked my doors and it was beautiful. It was, oh, it's the most amazing gift that it's yours. Nobody can do anything to you. I would have had to break a lease and everything because I could not afford 1600 You know, you've got so your utilities, your phone, your internet. And I think within two weeks, I got this place. It was actually housing that found this for me. And then HAG, they were so good. They paid the first two weeks rent. They paid the bond. They paid for furniture removalists. It was a comforting process to go through to have them behind me. Having secure housing for me meant that I could be me again. You feel a little bit in a trance for a while. Is this mine? Can I stay here? And then all of a sudden it hits you and you just breathe. You breathe and you think, oh my gosh, is this really happening? I could do things my way for the first time in my life. You know, have my little ornaments, my animals, my prettings, my garden, my plants. I could have all the things that were close to my heart. Literally. Thinking about it now, after I've got safe, secure and low cost housing, I lived in a perpetual state of crisis. The times that I've had to see a therapist because of self-harm and disordered eating and other psychological problems that were going on. It's like, I didn't put it together in my head with, oh, that was that time when you were evicted from where you had been living for 10 years. So yes, you were having a mental health crisis because of being homeless. <laughs> It doesn't need to be big, this little place that I'd like to live in. It doesn't essentially have to be with a cluster of older women. In some ways, I'm living longer than I once thought I would because I had a lot of illness in my middle years. And I'm more clear that I want to have nature around me, be, be physically active, be preparing my own meals and I seem to be a sort that likes company but likes to live alone. Even when you're at a state where you don't know what's around the corner, just keep an open mind about everything. Try to picture yourself a bit of light coming through because that's what's gonna get you through and there is help out there. 
and I'm hoping that I can help somebody out there like this. So, 